but the true goal is for you as a student to walk into an environment where you're comfortable, you know who you're going to work with, and you learn how to engage in content in a healthy way. Hello, Lindley. Hi, Victor. Thanks so much for joining us for the fourth podcast of the Chemistry Student Podcast. Uh, we should set the setting here. So Edgar and I both started SI this semester. Um, Victor, you are the SI coordinator, right? And then mm-hmm. Lindley is the Slack assistant director. So as for the podcast, we just want to talk about the SI program, uh, highlight the SI program, and as we'll talk a little bit about the other Slack programs that are available to Texas A students. Um, but yeah, first we want to just kind of talk about you all. So Victor, you came from Florida, right? I uh, did. Yeah. How, so you were an SI in Florida and now you came all the way over here to be the coordinator for Texas State? Yeah. So I started out um, at a learning center in Florida Atlantic University in, in Boca Raton. Um, and I started out as a, a French and general psychology tutor. Um, and then slowly made my way into an SI position for general psych. Um, and then after I was an SI leader, I went to grad school for higher education leadership. And during those two years, I was the graduate assistant for um, the SI program at FAU. Um, and then upon graduation, looking at options, looking at places that were not too cold um, and fitting with, with my particular non-negotiables of where I'm living and, and what, is, what is available and uh, saw, the, saw the position at Texas State and um, I'm, I'm very happy to, to be one of the SI coordinators here. Awesome. Yeah, because for quite a while, Lindley, you've been doing this on your own, right? And now Victor's come in the last two years or last three years. How long have you been here, Victor? Two years. Two years. Yeah. Um, yeah. So my own background, I was an SI leader at the University of North Texas, uh, senior year of my undergrad degree. I was an SI for a World Lit class. Um, Did that for two semesters and then um, became a graduate assistant in our learning center at UNT. Um, So I was the GA for about a year and a half. And then I went full time in that learning center as their SI coordinator. Did that. (laughs) I'm sorry, that's one of my wolves. Uh, Did that for about three years uh, at UNT as a full time SI coordinator. Uh, And then I came to Central Texas in 2005. Uh, actually came here unemployed, which is probably the single, if you know my personality type, is like the single greatest leap of faith in my adult life. Uh, but I had just gotten married and so uh, relocated and uh, uh, got hired uh, at Texas State in June of 2005. So um, for many years was the sole coordinator. But when I, when I first started, there were about 20 uh, 25 SIs maybe in that first year um, each semester. And so it was much smaller. Uh, I was charged with growing it and expanding it. Uh, we grew very rapidly in chemistry. My first year was actually the first year we were in chem. Uh, okay. we, started, we started with two SIs in Gen Chem 1 uh, with Dr. Deborah Feeks in Fall 5. And it just grew uh, and it grew and it grew and um, we continue to expand into other courses and, and things like that over the years. So I, when we got to a place where we got, we got the graduate assistant, um, I would have to look up the year, but uh, we got the graduate assistant position, but we've always relied heavily on student leadership. Um, I believe very firmly that that student leadership is is really central to what makes us a great program. Um, you you take great leadership uh, initiative and and ownership and pride in the program. Uh, and so uh, before we got the position that eventually would become victors, we relied on senior leaders, what we call the senior leaders now. And so we had two and three seniors each semester, and then a graduate assistantship. Um, and I, I would have to look up the year. I think we've had the SI coordinator for STEM for maybe four years, four and a half years, something like that. So it took about a decade before we got the full-time person um, to, to help uh, help me run the program. Um, and I, I've, we've been so, so happy and fortunate to have Victor and his background and his experience in, in our center. 
Um, so yeah, so I was a little bit of a one woman band for a while, but, um, but again, the, you know, the student leadership has been, has been just phenomenal. And, and I, you know, we, we've done what we could with what we had and it, and it's worked really well. So, but super fortunate to have Victor on, on the team now. You can I'd like, uh, oh, oh, go ahead, Nick. Go ahead. Go ahead. <clears throat> oh, I was just going to mention, I'd like to just kind of, uh, ask you both a question. So you both have been an SI at some point right in in your i guess uh undergraduate career um i really appreciate whenever i uh well obviously you know you guys are our bosses uh i really appreciate when you know the hierarchy has experienced um i guess being where everybody's been at so it's kind of like if your boss has never done what you've done then how can they tell you what to do it's mm-hmm. kind of like that thing um but it's not in this case. So I guess my question is, how does uh, how did your SI, being an SI leader, how did that experience help you kind of understand your SIs now? Obviously, we live in different, that, I guess maybe that was like in different times, right? But, you know, it's still an, an SI position. Uh, I mean, I can, I, I'll start. Um I think my own experience as an SI, I, I took the position, I, I sought a position in that department thinking that eventually I wanted to teach. I uh, was thinking about a PhD in, in English and, 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 you know, seeking a position as a, as a faculty member um, and just kind of fell in love with this other aspect of the classroom uh, and in the learning center environment and what it does for students. And so it was, it's almost for me, sort of the best of all of the worlds um, I get to use a lot of organizational, um, it's just organization, like hyper organization is just kind of a part of my personality type. So I get to utilize that, uh, but I also get to see, kind of keep my toes in the classroom, um, and, and helping others to kind of pursue the same path almost. Um, so I think that's one of the ways it's really directly impacted my path over the, you know, over the almost probably 20 years since since I was an SI well maybe not that long 18 maybe eight. <laughs> not not quite two not quite 20 um but uh it impacted it impacts how I teach my own classes it you know that experience changes how I facilitate a classroom it changes how we train you uh it changes how I work with my kids when I'm working with my kids in their homework um I mean, it, I, so, I mean, I think it's really relevant to, to all, all sort of facets of my life as far as just that experience and how it's impacted. Like, I can't think of really an area that it hasn't um, touched on at least. And, and I would, I would share a lot of those same sentiments. I, um, before going into the academic world, um, I was very involved in the martial arts world. And uh, in, in my work, there was a lot of similar uh, philosophies about like helping students learn um, to get to the answer on their own and understand the why and whatnot. And so at the time that I started um, in tutoring at NSI, uh, my interests were solely in, in research, um, in, in psychology. And so when I took on the role of an SI leader, it was a perfect blend of classroom management, which I had experience in and I loved and, and working with students and working with content that I loved. Um, and at the same time, having um, some experience with with data and um, the the pedagogy behind how you run a session and and the questions that you ask that um, like like Lindy said, I, I find myself using SI skills with my family, with friends, um, really really on the daily. Um, and so direction comes in quite handy. <laughs> redirection, yeah. 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 So, so for me, in, in a role like this, where I'm supervising a group of people who, who are in an essay editor role, um, I can think back to the, the struggles that I had maybe in getting students to attend sessions or um, managing life and school and SI responsibilities. Um, and and so, so I think that ability to, to kind of have some level of understanding um, allows me to kind of empathize with others a little bit more and and on the supervision side, um, I think it allows both Lenny and I, who, who are very similar, to be really critical about what can we do to make everything work, to be to be as as proactive as possible, 
um, in providing information and setting up trainings and opportunities so that um, we can prevent some of the issues that maybe we have experienced or we have seen others experience in, in, in our work. Yeah. Um, oh, you mentioned, I mean, that. I'm sure at some point um, we'll bring it back up, but one of the many benefits of being an SI is definitely the communication skills that we gain. I mean, we run from four to five sessions a week and, and that alone already for me, at least besides the communication courses that I've taken, uh, has improved my communication massively. And it's just running, running a group, basically running, having organization skills and, and all that stuff that I think personally, like everyone's been saying, I've used in my everyday life now. It's not just an, an SI thing. We should define the SI program. I know, Lindley, a while ago, you said when people ask you what your job is, it's like you, you get paid to lead a study group or something along those lines, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think it's important to talk about what SI is and how we define it because it's also really important uh, to use the right wording. I know a lot of students sometimes have the impression that SI is a tutoring service, and that is uh, far from the truth. Both Edgar have, uh, and I have definitely come to notice that as well. Right, so just defining. So in simple terms, I mean, if you look at if you look at sort of the historical um, for many, many years, intervention programs or remediation programs were designed to target students based on combinations of factors. Right. Um, so maybe it was, you know, trying to target students who <clears throat> uh, came from certain socioeconomic backgrounds or came in with certain markers in their um, testing from high school or um, whatever. Right. Lots of different. Uh, factors that maybe programs chose. Um, supplemental instruction actually chose to sort of spin that in a way because uh, when Dr. Deanna Martin created the program, she was given a very small internal grant at the University of Missouri at Kansas City. Um, and she was asked to think of something that could reduce the attrition in some courses in their School of Medicine and specifically in the areas of nursing and dentistry, um, they were they just had uh, some courses that had really high level attrition. Okay, so um, significant numbers of students who were not successfully completing the course, either they make a D, they make an F, or they withdraw. Um, and so she said, you know, well, let's just implement something that students can participate in, um, make it consistent every week of the entire semester. Um, it's always been a voluntary model. Uh, the original model is entirely voluntary. Uh, and so uh, students could opt to attend and participate. And her idea was that you would have a student leader, a near peer um, who had been in the classroom, knew you know what to expect because they had just had that experience themselves. But then in auditing the class again, right? All SI leaders sit in the classes, sit in the lecture. Um, so in auditing that class again, they have the repetition, of the content, but they also know exactly what the other students are hearing, right? So they're hearing the same lecture, they know how the teacher teaches, they know what the test might look like, they know when the test is coming, um, and so they're just really familiar. In a traditional tutoring environment, um, typically you sit down with a tutor and you kind of have to establish, right, like what are you working on? You know, oh, you have a test coming up, tell me about that, right? So you sort of eliminate a lot of that initial discussion that typically goes on, and you're able to sort of jump in with somebody you're already familiar with and that you know is familiar with what um, you're working on, right? Um, so again, uh, they established that program in the mm, middle late 70s, um, middle late 70s, I'd have to look up the year, but um, within just a handful of years, supplemental instruction just kind of like skyrocketed, right? Uh, became federally designated as a significant educational intervention um, program because they could produce data that said that students who participate, um, on average, students who consistently participate would do about a half to a whole letter grade better than the students that don't. Um, if you're familiar with SI or if you've ever been to session, the, the goal is really not content specific, although content, I like to say, is kind of a happy byproduct, right? You're practicing content. You're working with content. But the true goal is for you as a student to walk into an environment where you're comfortable, you know who you're going to work with, and you learn how to engage in content in a healthy way, right? So you're working with your colleagues in your class to 
just become more fluent. And hopefully, I mean, our goal really and truly is that your students that are working with the SIs will walk out of a session and go, I really like the way Edgar did that. I'm going to try that in my other class, right? I'm going to take these skills and these practices and apply them elsewhere. Because the goal is not necessarily to inflate the number of students that make A's. The goal is to reduce the number of students that have to retake the class, right? We're trying to get them through and get them on to the next, um, mm. to the next area. So um, I don't know, Victor, do you have like a nutshell definition? Um, I would, <laughs> I'd probably say so um, SI is a non-traditional form of tutoring that's embedded in the classroom that's geared towards developing uh, strong study strategies along with um, better understanding course content. That's pretty yeah. good. That was a long sentence. <laughs> <laughs> no, and one thing to emphasize as well, uh, one thing to emphasize as well is the collaborative fact of SI. Um, and I've really learned from this throughout the semester because I know um, it's a big negative to start lecturing in your SI sessions, right? That's why we have a professor. And sometimes you just fall into it, especially now when we're on Zoom. And we can talk about that as well. But I, I caught myself spending so much time trying to create really good problems and exercises that can kind of lead students into certain ways of thinking and all that. And I figured, you know, it's so it's one thing to know how to solve a problem and one thing to know how to create a problem. And I found myself like learning by creating problems. And I thought this is something the students could be doing. So now I've taken the approach a lot in my sessions to have them create the so I'm an organic chemistry SI. So they create the structure and the other team will name the structure and we kind of pass it along like that. And I'm just sitting there like saying, yeah, that's right. Or uh, try this instead. And, and it's a lot more collaborative that way. And I think that's one big thing that I've changed that has really helped Zoom sessions for SI be a lot more collaborative. It's, it's counterintuitive, you know, like when you're familiar with something and somebody asks a question, it's not natural for you to say, how do I get them to better grasp this <laughs> answer? You know, I mean, when you know right. the answer, right, then your intuition is to just sort of spit it out. Um, but you really hit on something beautiful, Nick, that, that you learn by teaching others, right? Um, I've heard this a zillion times. I didn't really know it until I had to teach it to someone else, right? And so them working amongst themselves, even though sometimes students are like, oh, I just want you to teach me, right? I just want you to lecture me, um, really is so powerful for students. Mm -hmm. That's one of the biggest things that drew me to SI. I, I, I think I like to have a passion for education and that's why I love tutoring and I got into SI. And I, I really recommend it for any student who might think they're good at it or would like to get better at it. Um, mm -hmm. And then just becoming much more familiar with the material has been an amazing byproduct of this process. Um, mm -hmm. And it, I, I just, um, in addition to all that, it's leadership skills, communication skills. I mean, I still kind of get a light sweat going by the end of some of my SI <laughs> sessions, but I just, it's, it's like, one and you know you, you get it over with you just move on to the next session it's really become routine and my communication skills i guess this is a public speaking uh way of of, of uh, communicating but interpersonally and and just small group leading teams it's really helped and we touched on trainings as well earlier in the conversation and si does provide training for their si's um, initial and ongoing training, which I, I love. I think they're really helpful. Um, and I, I would love to see more, especially in person. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and yeah, so especially in person, but the, the trainings have really helped. And mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting that as an SI. I expected like, a, this is how it works. Good luck. Mm -hmm. and, and, and to an extent, that is kind of how you learn. You just get put into the SI sessions and you start learning as you go. But the, the training in leadership and communication has also been something that I wasn't expecting um, at, when I got into SI. There's a ton of things that y'all can take away, um, that an SI can take away, um, regardless of what path you're really hoping for, right? Some students become SIs because they're just looking for an on-campus job and it gives you a certain level of flexibility being on campus. That's great. Some SIs become SIs because um, it's flexible in terms of scheduling or 
because they're thinking about becoming teachers and they want to kind of investigate that a little bit more. Sometimes it's looking for letters of recommendation um, and they want to work with a particular faculty member again. Uh, uh, sometimes it's preparation for MCAT, right? Um, so like we have lots of OCHEM SIs who are getting ready to take the MCAT um, for, for medical school, MCAT, PCAT, right? Um, and they just listening to that lecture again and again, right, is powerful for them, can have real um, implications for, for what they do. Could be that you decide you want to go to grad school uh, and, be, and enter the professoriate, you know. So um, there's just, there's so many, the public speaking, classroom management, leadership, um, organization. I mean, I mean, there's just, there's a lot, there's a lot for students to take away from, from the experience. I'll like even, uh, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I was going to say, I'll even add to that a little bit. In this, like, literally this past uh, OT that we had, the training, uh, one of them was goal setting. And I was I was sitting through it, taking notes, and I was like, wow, I'm about to go do this, like, in a bit. <laughs> because I realized, I was like, uh, one of the things that hit me was, <laughs> I was like, well, am I making smart goals? <laughs> and then <laughs> I started going, like, well, is this specific enough? And then the thing that caught me the most was the is it realistic? Because I was like, well, is it realistic for me to do this in the time that I've given myself? And a lot of the goals that I had were mm, not really. I was like, maybe I should space this out. And then I started thinking, well, I could probably tell my students this because they're probably having the same problem that I am where I'm trying to finish like three lectures in one day and that, you know, that's not really possible. And it goes back to like, there's so much, so much that I've gained so far from being an SI that I wasn't expecting when I was applying I was just kind of like, oh, I'm going to, you know, work on leading a group and uh, hopefully everyone can make a better grade. Right. But it's way more complex and way more, I guess, beneficial than just that. Yeah. One of my favorite things about the position is watching the level of growth that takes place in in the staff in particular. Um, since like Lily and I were a little bit disconnected from from the students in comparison to when we were at size. Um, and, and as you guys, I, I would assume, are able to see the growth in your students that maybe week one, they were not super comfortable in, in sharing and in participating and whatnot. Um, and as the semester goes on, they you, you get to see them grow. We, I know I, I enjoy seeing that in, in the staff, whether it be someone who grows out of their shell and is, is, is much more confident than when we saw them day one of training or, or during the interview process. Um, in, in, in all regards, like the, the whole list that when we said, like that leadership piece, that, um, communication, even via email or just professionalism, um, for a lot of people, this, this is their, this may be their first job. Um, and so I, I know there's a lot of students that come into the SI role and are not familiar with, with professional communication or, um, how to email faculty or how to, how to have a conversation with faculty, um, in a professional and, and effective manner. Um, and then just networking overall. I, I love to hear stories of, of SI leaders that stay connected with their SI professors um, after the fact, because I know from experience that that can be a, a relationship that is that is beneficial and, and sustaining. Um, and, and for example, for, for my position, um, when I applied for, for one of the SI coordinator positions at Texas State, um, my SI faculty from three years prior uh, was a part of my letter of recommendation process because her and I are still in communication and and, um, and and still chat. And I think there is so many, regardless of what your personal goals are, there's so many different opportunities um, for you to gain meaningful, whatever you want to call it, um, that gets you a little bit closer to your goals or just puts you at a better place than, than when you started out. Yeah, there's also, definitely, yeah. There's a real tangible um, personal relationship uh component of this too because you you come in contact with other people who are like you in terms of having these types of interests having these types of um academic backgrounds having similar long-term goals um and and very often y'all y'all become really good friends the SIs very often become really good lifelong friends. Um, I, I went to a wedding in, right before the pandemic started in March, very early March. Um, and th the bride and two of her bridesmaids were seniors together. 
Uh, and then there were probably three or four SIs that showed up for the wedding that I had not seen in, you know, in, in several years. Right. Um, and, and it's, it does, it creates these really long-term kinds of friendships with many of you where you stay in touch and you, uh, and be, may, remain parts of one another's lives, you know, even after college and, and things like that. And so that's one of the really cool, um, it's almost like joining a club sort of, right? Like an organization. It's almost like joining an organization, a club or an organization, um, but uh, having a job at the same time. And that's something that's really fun to see um, as a long-term kind of kind of thing. One of my favorite things about SI is all the data y'all have. Um, and a lot of it you put on display. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of surveys that go into SI, a lot of, you know, measuring which students got A's in their course, which ones got B's, which ones were the ones that were attending session, how often were they attending? I mean, it's it's extensive. I really like it. And and you put it on display on your website. And, and my professor, I was talking with my professor for SI, Dr. Irving, and he got a personalized email, I think from Victor, saying like, this is your data specific to your class of how your class did in the summer and spring 2020. Uh, mm -hmm. And it would show like which students went to SI sh sessions and got an A and which ones, you know, did not. And I, I just, I find that very fascinating because that's one of the best ways to measure whether or not what we're doing even does anything, if it works or if it doesn't. Um, what are some of the biggest takeaways you'd say you see in, in some of the data that you, you continuously track? I, I would say that without data with a program like this, it would be difficult.